sure to check out Agile's Geeks for your figures and collectibles. This video and YouTube channel is rated PG-13, so that means this channel is not for anyone under the age of 13. So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 19 here, and today we're going to be doing a bit of a throwback action figure review, and I'm going to take you back to the late 90s, and we're going to be taking a look at the McFarlane Toys Spawn Movie Violator. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look at the box. All right, so as you can see here, this is the box that Violator is packaged in. We do get a giant window on the front of the box. On the top does say the warning and blah, 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 so nobody cares about them. It does say the jaw extends, eyes light, and the horn strikes. And on the bottom here says Violator. We do get an image of the Spawn movie version. Spawn also says Spawn the movie. Then the bottom here, it does show you how to use his action features, and pretty much none of them work and here is the top of the box and then the one side there and then there's the other side same thing then the back to show a bunch of the other figures in the spawn movie wave and then the comic spawn line right there along with a kiss line and monsters line as well but anyway that is the packaging let's get this figure but to take a closer look at what i think is the coolest spawn villain violator Alrighty, so taking a closer detailed look, and by the way, the box he is included in, he is a son of a biatch to get out of the box. There's so many twisty ties, and the way they did it, it's all over. It, it's just really a pain in the ass to get this figure out of the packaging. But the best part about this figure is the detail. I hate this damn action feature. I hate it. It's so annoying. It keeps falling out. I'm just going to end up super gluing it so it does not keep doing that it's like all right enough of that but uh the, the the detail like i said is definitely the best aspect to this figure god damn it but uh, i love the way the horn looks up here we get some very nice like a black wash all throughout the beige there which looks great man really nice job on that and then the horns on the side of his face look just as dope i'm just gonna leave that man I love the, uh, the, the, the wash that they added throughout the entire figure. That's something McFarlane was always fantastic at was detail and, and shading and paintwork. Then we do get the horns and then it runs down his spine as well, which looks pretty cool. But just all, all like the sculpted wrinkles around the neck look great. And then the eyes are translucent plastic because he does have a light up feature, which does not work. The batteries probably died. They're over 20 years old. So I, I would have to change them out in order to get them to work. But uh, even like the inside of the mouth, the teeth and everything look great. Really nice job on that, man. Very cool looking. Even under the jaw looks great as well. Just the, 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 the wash throughout the gray for the skin tone looks fantastic. Arms look great. We get the very skinny arms there. And then he has like these fins on his uh, forearms, which look pretty cool. And then the hands look dope. I like the way the fingers look. And the paint's pretty clean on this as well. I mean, it's mostly just a black wash and or shading all throughout it, but it just turned out really nice. Like, even around the spine area here, the shading turned out turned out great. And you could see that's where you would swap the batteries in case you were interested. Then he does have a horn on his butt there. And then there's one on his lower spine. He has a horn over here around the pelvis area. And then the legs here do get that nice wash or shading all throughout it. It's very nice job with the, 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 the sculpt detail. It still holds up incredibly well to this day, man. And then the toes and everything look fine. So overall, the detail on this figure holds up incredibly well here in 2020. And this was made in 97 or 98, I believe. And, and McFarlane was definitely ahead of the game back in the late 90s. He, he just knew how to make toys. And his toys were some of the best toys back then and and hopefully his his figures become one of the best figures once again in 2020 especially when he he kick starts his uh, original spawn line but the detail uh, outstanding on this violator for a figure that's way over 20 years old but anyway let's continue on all right so since there's no accessories included with violator i'm gonna swap the accessories with the action features that are included on the figure here. So Violator is supposed to have three action features. The horn, 
extends, his jaw extends, and the light the, the lies. The eyes are supposed to light up. So the eyes here, as you can see, they're orange, translucent plastic, and you're supposed to press down on this horn right here, and it should light up the eyes. But of course, this figure is over 20 years old, so the battery must have died, and if you would like to swap it, you just unscrew that screw, pop this piece off, swap the batteries, and I'm pretty sure the light-up feature would work with fresh new batteries in there another feature is the horn here you're supposed to pull back on it and then it extends and it's supposed to stab his opponent but it's stabbing himself in the head so that's not a very good uh, weapon for violator there he's just going to end up stabbing himself in the damn head there i'm just going to end up super gluing this because this this thing is such a pain in the ass it constantly uh, uh falls out like if he's leaning a little forward or something, it's going to fall out. You see what I mean? It's a really irritating action feature. That's something I've always hated about action figures, which were the action features. I always thought they ruined a figure, and most of the time they were pretty dumb. And then the jaw is supposed to extend. Mine is stuck. I'm not going to bother trying to extend it. I think it looks fine like that but it's supposed to extend I guess maybe down to here like when he, he was about to bite off Spawn's head or eat the dog or something like that in the movie so uh, those are the three action features included with Violator and only one of mine do technically work out of the box which really isn't a big deal like I said it's an incredibly old figure but anyway Let's keep moving on with the review. So now for the height of Violator, standing at his tallest to the very top of his head, it looks like he's around 11 inches tall, then to the very top of the tallest horn, it looks like he's about 13 and a quarter inches tall, which is definitely pretty damn big for Violator, which he should be pretty big because he was in the movie. And then here he is compared to the Mezco 112 Silver Knight Batman, the McFarlane Toys MK11 Spawn, the Marvel Legends Retro Series Deadpool, and the Marvel Legends Monster Venom. And I think this new McFarlane Toys Spawn scales really well with this older movie Violator. And if you are curious, yes, this is a wired chain that I did make for my spawn figure and they will eventually be for sale and instead of these three prong pieces being on the end it's either going to be skulls or spikes in case anybody was wondering about the chains there and then here he is compared to the NECA Ultimate Edition Jungle Hunter Predator, the NECA Assassin Predator, the Storm Collectibles Goro, and the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Hulk and Violator still towers over most of these figures, but he seems to be around the same height as the Assassin Predator. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awakened Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and this is definitely one of the weaker points to the figures. Uh, this was the type of articulation we got with 90s figures so just imagine what we went through when we were younger trying to pose around our figures but this piece as i showed you before is an action figure so it does move back and forth but it just springs right back to the front so it's technically not a point of articulation but the head does just swivel that's all it does the jaw is supposed to extend but as i mentioned before mine's stuck in there uh no torso or waist articulation the arms just have a swivel at the shoulder we do get a hinge at the elbow that does bend in a lot more than 90 degrees so that's definitely good the wrists just swivel my left one is stuck I'm not gonna keep trying to move it because it's gonna break off but you do see they do just swivel the legs here do hinge up a little more than 90 degrees so that's definitely good they do also go to the back a lot more than 90 degrees which is crazy they don't go out to the side because they're just a swivel and then the knees do bend back all the way to get them in some good crouching poses and then the ankles just hinge up, whoops, up and down there. And I do have a bit of looseness in uh, my, in the left knee. I mean the right knee right here, as you can see. So that does kind of suck. Not bad at the hips. It's just that damn right knee joint, which kind of sucks. So, I mean, it's a 90s figure. Of course, the articulation isn't going to be the best. And the joints aren't going to be the tightest. But, I mean, at least you'll be able to get them. You can get them in a standing pose and a crouching pose, which is definitely pretty cool for a 90s figure. But you're, you're not going to be able to get them in a bunch of crazy 
poses, and I'm going to show you what kinds of poses you can get Violator into right about now. But anyway, that is my throwback review of the McFarlane Toys Spawn movie, Violator. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this figure with detail, I'd definitely give it an even 9. Articulation, I'd probably give it like a 2.5. And then the overall quality, I would probably give an even 6. If you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure, I found this on eBay, so your best chance at finding this is most likely eBay or Amazon, or maybe if you go to local comic book shops, because some of them still sell all their Spawn stuff. Ageless Geeks does not carry these in stock. I don't think he does, but you can get your other figures and collectibles from ageelsgeeks.com. If you can't find something on the website, I do highly recommend going through their Instagram or Facebook page. I will put more information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. And if you liked it, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, Oh well, I guess you didn't like it, but thanks for watching, I will see you later! So this is the box violator is included with the action features part of the well, what the heck of the tallest horn it looks like he's about three inches three inches what the heck that's 13 inches damn it the Neko ultimate blah, 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 blah. and violator still towers over most of these figures but he seems to be about the same size blah it probably does extend, but I'm not sure why mine isn't. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how to do it. Maybe I should look at the directions on the bottom of the box. That would be a smart idea, wouldn't it be, Daredevil 19?